to figure this show out. So.
Good morning, people of Moss Bluff United Methodist Church and others who are joining in with us today as we come on this Sunday to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are still in the season of Easter and we celebrate a risen Lord. And we are so thankful for your presence here online with us, either watching on Facebook or you're watching this uh, later on our YouTube channel, either way, you can share the link. If you would do that, you could. Uh, there's a share button there at the bottom, and you can share, create a watch party, or just share it on your link. Uh, we would on your on your post. We would appreciate that. We are glad to see you here this morning. Just a few things I want to share with you today uh, before we hear some music and have a time of prayer. You can list your prayer concerns on there. Uh, and just we'll lift those up. Uh, a couple of things I want to mention. You can still be a part of our uh, study on the book of Revelation, Breaking the Code. We do it on Zoom on Wednesday mornings and Wednesday evenings. You just need to purchase the book. You can get that digitally. And you can send an email to RevMarkBray at Gmail or just send a message on our Facebook page and I will send you the Zoom link. Um, I'm asking, too, that you get your Bible, find your Bible, because during my message today, uh, I'm going to look at a couple different ways that the um, verse is told in different versions of the Bible. So I think it, you can just get your Bible out ready to go uh, a little bit later. And also something a little different we're doing just to try to stay more connected some of you may have gotten a text right about an hour ago reminding you of this worship service. Uh, that is with our text in church uh, service. And if you want to be uh, keep updated on what's happening in the church through text, uh, you can type the, uh, send a text to this number. Uh, well, first, if you are new to our worship service and you're watching, and you're not a part of our church, you can see that phone number there on the screen and type the word live and you will get a text back from me. So there's the number 337-324-9172. And then we have another one if you want to stay in the loop. that you type the word loop to that same number and it will give you the latest information about the church that will be on our Facebook page as well. Our first song this morning is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. This is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone by Chris Tomlin. Good. 
his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long Once again, we're thankful for those musicians. Uh, some of these were taped before uh, social distancing was really uh, uh, strongly encouraged. So that's why you see that, because I know people go, oh my gosh, they're saying it's so close. Uh, but we have changed that. Um, we come in this time of prayer. I appreciate you listing those prayer concerns uh, here uh, in the list. And we see all those and we lift those people up in prayer. We remember them and uh, hold them in prayer as we come into this time of prayer. And we begin with a moment of silent prayer. Let us pray. to a church building, that we are able and uh, free to worship in our homes as we please, uh, and we are thankful for that as well. We're thankful for the presence that you give us in our lives each and every day, and so we come to praise you, we come to lift up your name on high. We come to, O oh, gracious God, knowing that there is still uh, things that we must do in our journey as Christ followers. There may be things that uh, we may call barriers that stand between uh, us and our Savior Christ. Things that we hold back. Things that we're not willing to let go of quite yet so that we may fully serve you, O holy and gracious God. So we ask that you help us to let go of those things that we may be holding back so that we can be full servants for you and you alone. We also come and lift up concerns of people who are hurting. We wake up every day, oh holy God, and we hear of more people who have died. We lift these families up to you. We ask that they know of your presence in this time. We pray for all of those who are sick, not just those affected by uh, the coronavirus, but others who are ill and who may be struggling, those who have chronic illnesses. We pray for all these, gracious God, and we pray for holy healing 
and that it may come into their life. We pray and are thankful for people in the medical profession who are to take care of us. Uh, we lift them up to you still, loving God, and we ask for protection upon them. We are thankful and we lift up the people who are uh, in the front line, on the front line who are serving us in grocery stores and uh, restaurants and other places so that we can have those essential functions of life. And we pray for our church, loving God. We pray that you continue to use us as the body of Christ in this world so that we can share the love of Jesus Christ with others. We lift all these prayers up in the name of the Holy Spirit and your Son, Jesus, who taught the disciples this prayer that we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now just the opportunity to, to affirm our faith. Today we're going to use the affirmation of faith from the United Church of Canada that's going to be on the screen and there in just a moment. Let us affirm our faith together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit, we trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, and life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now we come, I'm beginning a, a new series today, uh, Head Scratchers. And so get your Bible ready, and so you can look at the passage that I'll be referring to uh, in today's scripture, in today's message. Hopefully that's going to come up on the screen. Oh, you know, we have technology glitches once in a while.
Have you ever come upon something in life that doesn't make sense? It may have been something you've heard or read. You look at it and say, what was that person really trying to say? There are even some scriptures that we come upon, particularly words that are attributed to, the, to Jesus, and we say, what in the world was Jesus trying to tell us? We hear phrases like, hate your father and your mother. Let the dead bury their own dead. We read these and we wonder, what did Jesus really mean by that? Are we supposed to hate our parents? Not worry about burying the dead? Head scratchers, that is what Talbot Davis in his book, Head Scratchers When the Words of Jesus Don't Make Sense, calls them. In this worship series over the next several weeks, we're going to look at some of these scriptures and we wonder, what was Jesus really trying to tell us? Today, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Hear these words from scripture. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven is violently attacked as violent people seize it. This is God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for these holy words. Help us to have new understanding of how they are speaking to us. We pray that our thoughts and our meditations and our prayers and the words that I speak are right and good with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This verse in Matthew is truly a head scratcher. What adds to the mystery is the variety of ways that you will find this scripture in other translations of the Bible. The version I read a moment ago is from the Contemporary English Bible. The New Revised Standard Version reads, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. An alternate reading in the New International Version reads, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing, and violent people have been raiding it. Now that gives the scripture a completely different look, one from suffering violence to causing violence. So is the kingdom of heaven violently attacked or is it forcefully advancing? As Davis points out in his book, the Greek words, which is the original language of these texts, can mean either one. Talk about confusing. So what was Jesus trying to say? What does it mean for us today? Now, there are answers to these questions, but it takes a little work to get to those answers. So let's go through a little work to get and find out what Jesus was really trying to tell us. When we hear these words of, as followers of Jesus, we find it hard to imagine that the Prince of Peace would use words that can mean violence, force, advance, seize, a raid. It's important to clarify also as we come into this passage that when Jesus said the kingdom of heaven, he was not talking about that place we all dream about going to in the afterlife. Rather, he was talking about the here and now, God's reign, Jesus' reign on earth. So does that mean that the kingdom of heaven, that is life on earth under the reign of Jesus, is the victim of violence, or does it in some way benefit from committing violent acts? Now, honestly, you can find cases of both. There have been times when Christians have suffered violent attacks. 
And there also have been times when Christians have attacked in the name of Jesus. To really understand what this passage is all about, we need to look, as you should with all scriptural passages, at the context of the entire passage. In other words, don't just look at this one verse. Look at the words of the passage around it. That helps us get clarity. So what is the whole passage? Well, it comes from Matthew chapter 11, verse 2 to verse 15, and I'm going to read that to you now. Now, when John heard in prison about the things that Christ was doing, he sent word by his disciples to Jesus asking, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus responded, Go report to John what you hear and see. Those who were blind are able to see. Those who are crippled are walking. People with skin diseases are cleansed. Those who were deaf now hear. Those who were dead are raised up. The poor have good news proclaimed to them. Happy are those who don't stumble and fall because of me. When John's disciples had gone, Jesus spoke to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the wilderness to see? A stalk blowing in the wind? What did you go out to see? A man dressed in refined clothes? Look, those who wear refined clothes are in royal palaces. What did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. He is the one of whom it is written, Look, I'm sending my messenger before you who will prepare your way before you. I assure you that no one who has ever been born is greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven is violently attacked as violent people seize it. All the prophets and the law prophesied until John came. If you're willing to accept it, he as Elijah is to come. Let the person who has ears hear. So what you have in this passage is first you find that John the Baptist was in jail. John had protested King Herod's getting married to his former sister-in-law, Herodias. Ultimately, John is executed for this protest. So there, in a sense, the setting of this passage is one, you could say, of violence. John was the first to announce the kingdom of heaven was coming. And because of that, and standing up for the kingdom, he ends up in prison. Now that prison, prison setting, as Davis points out, seems to have affected John. He was now having feelings of doubt. In 11.3, John asks, Are you, Jesus, the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Think about this. John the Baptist, the one who called people a bunch of vipers, who baptized, who breathed fire in the name of Jesus, was questioning his own cousin's lordship of all. Yes, John was in jail. He knew that his life may be ending soon, and he, in a moment of questioning, believed that Jesus may not be really the one, the Savior, John was desperate and he needed help. I would say that almost all of us have had moments like this. We were hurting, a job loss, a broken marriage, and we wondered if all those moments in worship and church and times of prayer and scripture reading and study, they really meant anything. Is there someone better, we may ask? 
To address this questioning, Jesus reminds John's disciples of all the incredible acts Jesus has done. He gave sight to the blind. He gave hearing to the deaf. He healed diseases. He even brought the dead back to life. Then Jesus reminds the crowd and tells them about the greatness of John. No one has ever been born as greater than John the Baptist. This eventually leads up to the head-scratching verse we read earlier. In this verse, Jesus is talking about John. John is indeed a victim of violence towards the kingdom of heaven. John has been jailed for standing up for something right. That same bold John, however, began to doubt the lordship of Jesus. To understand that this verse can be understood in two different ways is to see this verse as Jesus is talking to John. Davis writes in his book, is the kingdom of heaven violently attacked or does the kingdom forcibly advance? Yes. John suffers as a representative of the kingdom, but John is also the one in whom the kingdom needs to advance forcefully, conquering him so that all his doubts and hesitations are pushed out. So what does this all mean for us? The kingdom of heaven, yes, is always under attack. And yes, we are called to forcefully eliminate anything that stands in the way of Jesus. We know the kingdom has been under attack. From King Herod trying to kill the baby Jesus, to the modern day Chinese government demolishing crosses or churches were deemed too large, forcing Chinese Christians underground. Yet God... The ruler of heaven and earth prevails in these attacks. Yes, in those same places where there is persecution, there has also been tremendous growth in those churches. It's gotten stronger. On the other side, Davis writes, to follow Jesus with real, any real integrity means you do it forcefully so that you ruthlessly, violently, Eliminate whatever holds you back from living in intimacy with Him. That means for you and I who claim to love Jesus, that we have to live like we love Jesus. You see, Jesus can conquer the enemies, but His friends like John, those are the people He has to worry about. Here's how you can sum up this head-scratcher scripture. And I'm quoting, Jesus has to conquer his friends before he conquers his enemies. Let me say that again. Jesus has to conquer his friends before he conquers his enemies. This means while you may consider yourself a good follower of Jesus, meaning you put your money in the offering plate or however you give electronically or mail the check to the church. You go to church online in place regularly, and you may have even sing the song, Friend of God. But that's not enough. There is some part of your life that Jesus has yet to conquer. There is some part of your life that you are holding back from Christ Jesus needs us to be all-in citizens of the kingdom of heaven. There's some part of our life that needs to be changed. We want the love of God in our lives, but we know that that love is not always gentle. So we hate it sometimes, if we're honest. Jesus didn't need a waffling John he needed a full in John. Jesus does not need you to have a part of your life that has not been conquered. He needs a full in you. Davis reminds us there are certain, certainly things that we are conquered by, but it isn't Jesus. It may be that you're conquered by ambition, money, politics, 
It may be that you're conquered by a television show, social media, or even your favorite sports team. It is those things that take us away from Jesus if we're full in on them. Letting Jesus conquer us means that we are ruthlessly, forcefully replaced, that we are to ruthlessly, forcefully replace all that not good stuff with things that are better. So what has conquered you in this world? Is it time to let go so that your whole self can be conquered by Jesus? Is it time to replace that which takes you away from Jesus with more Jesus? Now, you're in good company if that's your struggle. Remember that even John the Baptist waffled. But honestly, that's not the kind of company we want to keep. The company that we want to keep is fully in with Jesus. So what will it take for you to forcefully remove that which takes you away from Jesus? There is no better time than now to start doing that. Amen and amen. Now we are going to hear uh, a song, a hymn. To God be the glory. Let's Good morning. Our first hymn we're going to share together today is To God be the glory. If you have a hymn book at home, it's found on hymn number 98. We're going to sing all the stanzas, To God be the glory. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. great things he has done. We are so thankful once again for those people coming in to share their gift of music. Uh, just a reminder of a couple of things that are important in the life of our church. First, you can become a member of our church if you would like. You can do that uh, by messaging me or calling me 
the ad email address too is revmarkbray at gmail.com and then you're going to see a graphic about how to if you're visiting or just you're new to our church you want to get more information that way you see the phone number right there you text the word live no loop okay first is loop loop is if you want to get more uh, just get the latest announcements and reminders about what's going on in our church uh, things we're doing online etc this loop stay in the loop and then the next one is the same phone number and then you can stay live just to get more information about our church I think we got that right there's the numbers I'm gonna have that uh, we're gonna add that to the post on this later as well then the other thing I want to remind you about is the importance of giving your offerings once again, we have a graphic, a way you can show you to do that. You can go to mossbluffumc.org. There's a tab at the top of the page about giving. Uh, there's also a way to text an offering uh, to us. Lots of things you can do with your phone. Uh, you see that number there, and you uh, just text in the dollar amount you want to give, and it will do that for you. Or you can send your check in snail mail, the old-fashioned way, to the church. And there is the address listed on there as well. Your giving remains important to us as we sustain things in the life of our church. And we are important, uh, that is important to do. Once again, I am thankful for you being a part of this worship you can still share this post with others. Later, I will have uh, our YouTube uh, channel with this service, and we will ha I have the sermon on there as well. Uh, so uh, share that with others as you will. We will continue our series next week of Head Scratchers, so I invite others to hear uh, as we understand or try to understand what Jesus was telling us in some of those head-scratching verses. I pray that God's blessings are upon you. Stay safe and know that God is always with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace.